Hey, up. Right, we're back to the old format just for today. Uh, as you know, I've got a serious case of man flu this week. Um, I intended putting out the comparison of the Royal Enfield Interceptor 650 with the Shotgun 650 today. But when it came to filming on Wednesday, the weather was terrible and I felt terrible. And so I decided uh, to give it a rest and I decided that I was going to have a rest on Wednesday and I would pick up again on Thursday with one of my rainy day projects. Information that I've had squirreled away for some time, um, didn't particularly want to make a video on it, but uh, when needs must, it's one of those subjects that I press into service. Now, I won't give out any names, but this information was actually sent to me by uh, a viewer of this channel, and I would like to thank him very much for doing so. He works in the engineering sector. And one of the tasks of his job is to um, source equipment, etc., that the firm that he works for requires. And in pursuance of that task, he came across some rather interesting photographs taken at the Triumph factory in Hinkley, which I'll show you towards the end of this video. Now, going back seven or eight years ago, I had a very high opinion of Triumph. Um, you know, it was one of those old English brands that had fallen on hard times during the 1970s and, to be honest, became a bit of a joke. Until it was rescued in the 1980s and finally went back into production in the early 90s. Like any red-blooded Englishman, you know, my loyalty to my country and all that, I really wanted to believe in the Triumph brand. And there were one or two occasions in the early sort of 2000s where I, I did consider getting one, but never actually got round to Triumph ownership until sort of mid to late 2016. And if I'm honest, as I have been in numerous videos over the years, that experience was a bit of a disappointment. Numerous mandatory safety recalls for dangerous wiring, Faulty gearboxes that apparently Triumph can't fix. Well, not permanently anyway. As well as various other quality control issues. And as time's gone on, I've started to regard Triumph motorcycles as the sort of the Levi jeans of the motorcycle world. The trade really heavily on the heritage. The charge twice the top price that the US competitors like Wrangler and Lee charge. And in many ways, the quality of Wrangler and Lee jeans is much better. It's thicker, more durable material. They fit better and they don't go all baggy after a few hours of wear. And they're half the price. But the key to Levi's success is not its quality or the design of its garments, it's its heavy reliance on its heritage and its huge marketing campaigns. I mean, when did you last see a pair of Wrangler jeans or Lee jeans advertised on TV? To a large extent, the trading on a reputation for quality that they used to have, but don't have any more. Don't get me wrong, they're not a bad product, they're okay, but they're just okay for the money. There's better quality out there for less money. But that's the power of advertising and marketing. They are regarded by those who don't really know about jeans as being the ultimate jeans because of the illusion and hype of their marketing machine. And that's how I view Triumph these days. I even gave Triumph another chance in 2021 when they approached me about some issues with my T120. They took it away to the factory to do yet another wiring recall, which disabled the fuel gauge and the fuel computer, and the bike was actually damaged on its return, and they wouldn't take any responsibility for it. I made one or two videos on the whole saga, and I'll tell you how it felt to me at the time. It felt as though it was a rebuke Triumph were paying me back for my honest reporting of their products in the past. I felt betrayed, but that was okay, because by then I'd moved over to Royal Enfield. A no-frills motorcycle brand for motorcyclists with minimal warranty claims charged at a reasonable price. 
And boy, did I get some flack from the Triumph fans for making that change to the channel. I have three Royal Enfields now, but the first Royal Enfield that I took on on this channel was the Interceptor 650. And what was the biggest complaint from all the Triumph fans? It's a copy of the Triumph Bonneville. Royal Enfield don't know how to make and design a motorcycle, so they've just copied the Triumph Bonneville. Now, I couldn't see it, it was clearly untrue. The new Interceptor is very clearly based on the original Interceptor from the 1960s. But this accusation that Royal Enfield had taken a Triumph Bonneville and used that as a basis for creating the new Interceptor 650 was so prevalent and common that in the end I actually had to source an original 1960s Interceptor so that we could physically compare it with the new version. Which, for the most part, I think, settled that argument, certainly on this channel anyway. Now, historically, of course, we know that manufacturers of various products do copy from the competitors. And the clearest case of that was Japan in the 1950s going into the 1960s, where they would buy British motorcycles, pull them apart, reverse engineer them, and then turn out what would, for the most part, carbon copies of BSAs, for example. And the Japanese motorcycle industry did the same with other brands from Germany and Italy. That was the sort of behaviour that the modern Japanese motorcycle industry was founded on. They saved tens of thousands of pounds in research and development by just copying someone else's product, which gave them a huge advantage against the original product. And I'm sure that similar things go on today, but you know, it's industrial espionage for want of a better expression. So it's not something that anyone really wants to advertise that they're complicit in. It's all very hush-hush behavior. Unless you triumph motorcycles. Now I'm going to show you some evidence in a moment and I'm not going to make any accusations, but I am going to pose a question. Could it be that the new Triumph 400 models, the single cylinder water-cooled motorcycles which are currently being built in Thailand and in India, have some DNA from the Interceptor 650? Could there have been, you know, some aspects of the Interceptor 650 copied into those machines. Now, as I say, this is not an accusation. I don't have any proper facts. I'm just posing a question. After all, the current Triumph motorcycles had no experience whatsoever of making reasonably priced, small capacity motorcycles. They had to get that recipe for success from somewhere. And the market that they were targeting with these new motorcycles was India and the rest of Asia. So it would make sense that you may look towards a model that has been successful in those markets as well as the rest of the world for inspiration. These 400cc single cylinder models were a collaboration between Triumph Motorcycles and Bajaj Motorcycles in India. Or at least, that's the information that Triumph has fed to us. This is all their own work. And once again, let's be clear, I'm not disputing that, I'm just posing a question. Now, we know that this collaboration on this motorcycle between Bajaj and Triumph was a very long time in the making, at least four years that I'm aware of. There were times when it seemed it was never going to happen. And it was around about the time or perhaps slightly after the time that the Interceptor hit the market. Which leads me back to that email that I received from a viewer back in February. Now, he was tasked with procuring some equipment for the company that he works for. And there are various um, internet auction sites that specialise in heavy plant machinery. And he landed on one particular auction. 
An auction for a heavy lift gantry crane. The sort of thing that you have inside a factory when you're building things and you need to move heavy sort of components around. The listing was through a site called Apex Auctions, who represent a lot of well-known firms and companies that we're all familiar with. Now, I don't know if that's actually what this particular viewer was looking for, but the location caught his attention. It was Triumph Motorcycles Limited. To be specific, the Triumph factory in Normandy Way in Hinkley, Leicestershire. Now, obviously, as with any sort of auction listing, there were some photographs of this equipment it's to show, you know, any prospective purchaser or bidder what they were bidding on. And it looked to me as though this particular piece of equipment was situated in their research and development centre or, you know, something along those lines because there were lots of motorcycles there in various stages of disassembly along with some big tool chests marked with the Triumph emblem and some bike lifts, you know, the kind of thing that you would have around for dismantling and putting bikes back together. Clearly some of them were Triumph motorcycles, as you would expect in, you know, a, a research and development area. But as I flicked through the various photographs of this equipment, I realised that not all of these motorcycles were in fact Triumphs. For example, there were some KTMs there, along with what appeared to be some Japanese motorcycles. But then, as I flicked through these pages of photographs, something very familiar caught my eye. And it's familiar because I have one just like it sitting in my garage. An Orange Crush Royal Enfield Interceptor 650. Now, it's difficult to tell from this photograph. You know, obviously, this was a coincidental part of a bigger picture. It does appear to me that the headlamp bowl has been removed and is perhaps dangling down near the front mudguard, which gives the impression that perhaps it is still undergoing some sort of assessment. And as this is an orange crush model, which I believe was discontinued late 2022, it's conceivable that they've had this bike for quite some time. Which might coincide with the development of the Triumph 400 models. Now, as I say, I've had this information for quite some time and I was quite surprised today when I had a look, when I clicked on the link, that this particular listing is still live on air, even though the auction itself finished back in February. We'll leave that link in the video description down below so you can go and have a look for yourself. But be aware, I think as soon as Triumph get wind of this video, if they've got any common sense, they'll have it deleted as soon as possible. Because let's face it, it's not a good look. Now, I really don't know why Triumph have possession of this motorcycle. I can only make wild guesses. But the first thing that sprung to my mind when I saw that the headlamp bowl was hanging off is that maybe they were looking for some tips on how to wire a motorcycle up safely and reliably. Because that is certainly something that Royal Enfield is very good at. Now, I don't know how this auction site works, whether they send a representative down to take the photographs or whether it's down to Triumph to supply the photographs, but what an almighty cock-up. As I've said, we all know that this kind of thing goes on, but you don't advertise it with photographs on a site that the public have access to. At the very least, you would have expected that they would have just moved the motorcycles out of the way while they took the photographs. Instead, they've left them there and put up a disclaimer that the motorcycles are not included in the sale. But just going back to when I first took the Interceptor on, and the flack that I took from Triumph fans saying that the Interceptor was a copy of the Triumph Bonneville, What's sauce for the goose is sauce for the gander, and having looked at these pictures, the question has to be asked, is the Triumph 400 a copy of the Royal Enfield Interceptor 650? Let me know in the comments section down below. 
Right, once again, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and my other videos and in doing so helping to support this channel. I really do appreciate it. I hope you found this video amusing. Um, if you have, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you're not already a subscriber. I will, of course, be back next week when hopefully I'll be firing on all cylinders. So until then, please ride safely and I'll see you soon.